Joining us now is Tiffany Longino. She's a candidate running for lieutenant governor of the great state of Mississippi. Tiffany, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. You bet. So, uh, all right, what uh, what was the inspiration? What uh, motivated you to jump in this, this race and run for lieutenant governor? I get asked that all the time. Sure. And so I get asked, hey, why not start on the local level? You know, in order to go for change, Mr. Dr- Mr. Dr- just mm-hmm. immediately, I think you just need to sometimes just go for it. And so as an educator of 15 plus years, I've I've taught, you know, governors, I've taught lieutenant governors, or Hmm. I made those. So seeing those different students and that diversity and that inclusion, hey, we need help on the local level. However, in order to change some of those policies on the local level, it comes from the state position first. And so... I just jumped right on in there. Okay. And so far, I've been doing well. Well, that's that's uh, certainly bold. <laughs> uh, but honestly, uh, we should all respect and, and uh, tip our hat to anyone Absolutely. who's willing to jump in that fire, because it definitely it, it, is a fire. And it is hot. <laughs> it is hot. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. So tell us about your background. You said you were an mm-hmm. educator for 15 years. Mm-hmm. I, I still am. Still okay. am. Um, on the collegiate level, I, I teach English. I teach education technology. Okay. I've taught high school. I've taught middle school. I've taught in Chicago. I've taught in the Delta of Mississippi. I've taught in Florida. Um, I'm also a Ph.D. candidate at a Mississippi State okay. in the Department of Instructional Systems and Workforce Development. You and I was dis- just yeah. discussing, you know, IT. So yep. that was kind of interesting to me. Yeah. Um, so, again, I've been in the field for about 18 years. So I've kind of I've seen and I've seen a lot of things, heard a lot of things. So okay. never would have thought in a million years that I would have been into politics because I'm not a politic. OK, so um, and I, I think that's one of the concerns and the issues of Mississippi. We're kind of tired of seeing those professional politicians because mm-hmm. that's what is becoming just the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. You have people uh, implementing and drafting legislation and are not concerned with the public. And so one of the main things that I want to do is bring the public back into public policy. Okay. H- how would you do that? So let's let's go for it. Right. So let's let's talk about the bill, House Bill 1020. Okay. You know, as you know that that House bill for those who do not know, it is the Supreme Court uh, the judges appointing uh, those judges in the city of Jackson. Mm -hmm. And then I believe it's um, House Bill 2423 with the expansion of Capitol Police. Now, let me just say, I agree with half of the bill, okay? The bill, the part that I do agree with is the expansion of Capitol Police. But that's the expansion of the entire city of Jackson, not just, you know, one part of city of Jackson, the city of Jackson. And so because we know that the public law enforcement, our, our Leos, they're underfunded. Mm-hmm. They're under underpaid. That's why you have the crime increase. Because, hey, if somebody run a red light, they're going to say, hey, they, they, they probably just step back. So we need more policing in the city of Jackson, though that's not going to fix the problem because you have to get to the root. So looking at House Bill 1020 with the appointment of judges and the prosecution, it is unconstitutional to appoint judges unless you have a special election or recuse or someone dies. So we had the senator from North Mississippi draft that, draft that legislation. So and that's fine. OK, if you have the ability, the skills to do so draft legislation, that's fine. But why not include the senator that's within that county? Say, hey. We need some help. Let's do a survey. Let's get the community involved. Let's see what their needs are. And so that's why we look like we're down here running around with no shoes on because that's how they portray us anyway. So, yes, Jackson needs help as far as crime. Absolutely. There um, I I was. I remember uh, the prosecutor, Jody Owen, say, hey, I, I need help. It doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat because he's open to it. But you just can't take someone from North Mississippi that has no idea, only going on hearsay and draft legislation for that community. So in order to draft effective legislation, you have to talk to those people that live in that community. Do you 
have you have you talked to that individual? Uh, you're talking about uh, Representative Trey Lamar. No, I, I didn't. believe. Have you asked him? Did he seek counsel and input from uh, the well, individuals I, who represent that uh, honestly, the Jackson I've, area? No, sir. I've okay. never had a personal conversation okay. with him. I would only be assuming, but you know, from what he said, and you know. A lot of people like to jump in, you know, and just say racism. When I had gone to Vicksburg last week, I honestly said, you know, no, it's, it's not racism. I, I just believe it's a little bit of ignorance because if I'm doing a research paper and I need to quote someone, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to look at statistics. I'm going to, you know, get our surveys, our interviews. And and I'm hoping, and, and that's another reason that we that I'm able to, I will mend those fences because it should have stopped right at right there said hey did you did you discuss these issues within the community you didn't go to the community we know okay. that for sure okay how, how do you feel about uh, some of the other issues that uh, I know folks are paying a lot of attention to uh, with respect to just legislation taxes for example mm -hmm. cutting of the income tax mm -hmm. reducing the mm -hmm. grocery tax you got any thoughts on Absolutely. those two matters let, let me say this i do not have a problem with cutting the tax the grocery tax nor do i have a problem with getting rid of the income tax however <laughs> we can say anything if you cut those taxes where is the rest of the revenue going to come from that's what I want to see. I don't listen. We're not Florida. We're not Texas. Right. They have more revenue because of their attractions and their bigger population. Mm -hmm. But we need to stop saying, hey, we're going to do this. I need you to think about, OK, if we do this. Where is this money going to come from? So if if we can develop a plan and show the people if we cut the income tax and the grocery tax. Now, what is going to go up? Because if you cut this, then obviously some taxes will go up. Okay. Well, some some would argue, of course, that well you could cut spending, and we're already producing done, surpluses. That's so correct. That, that, that's a way to counteract that as well. Let's talk about uh, the ballot initiative, the citizen initiated ballot mm -hmm. initiative. You just made the point you want to mm -hmm. see the public more involved. How do you feel about that? We don't have one right now in Mississippi. That that is true. We do not have one. I mean, getting you know getting the the public involved and. We have to be very careful, careful of streamlining uh, the voting process. We don't want to make it so hard that people are intimidated by it. We definitely want to protect, you know, our, our voting system. But we, we want to be aware of, you know, who are we protecting it from Okay. Um, in, in that aspect of it. Well, let me clarify. I was really talking about. Uh, the mechanism that allows citizens to place a measure on the ballot to vote to to um, enact into law. Okay, you're talking about as far as if you vote for someone and then that person doesn't get in and it goes to the next person. No, the that's next ranked candidate. choice voting. Uh, this is really uh, talking about uh, such as the medical marijuana measure uh, that right. went to the okay. ballot right, that the right. citizens voted on and then that got turned over by right. the Supreme Court. So we presently don't have a mechanism for that. Would you support one? The House certainly supports one with the existing signature requirement threshold. The Senate, Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman, for example, supports a higher signature threshold. Do you have any thoughts about that? I, mean, I don't want to dwell on that, but just no, curious. Yeah, no, no, you're fine. Yes, I, I definitely support it. Again, I'm <laughs> less government is the people's choice. Okay. Absolutely. All right, what about health care? Mm -hmm. You got any thoughts about that? Medicaid expansion, mm -hmm. for example? Mm -hmm. hey, absolutely. We're, we're number 50. Nationwide rankings, we're 50 in, uh, in, in the country. So, you know, obviously that's not good. Definitely, um, I'm for Medicaid expansion. Again, <laughs> less government, but when you look at statistics and you look at the research, we're like number one in poverty, right? We're obese. We have 43% of Mississippians who suffer from, you know, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So we have to give resources first before we can take away. So if you do not want the Medicaid expansion, then what are you giving to the people, you, you get what I'm saying, to supplement, mm -hmm. to even it out? I am for Medicaid expansion. Okay, for sure. Is is there any areas of government that you believe we could uh, which could trim, just trim the cost of government, the expenses, the spending? This is typically uh, a key part of Republican platform. I would say 
less of more state as far as employees concerned, um, which okay. you know that, you know, Mr. Delbert Holzman has, yeah. you know, done that. Um, any unnecessary or frivolous, you know, appointments or jobs. I'm, I'm Before we that. go, we got to ask you PERS. Sure. Have you thought about that? You know, yeah, PERS absolutely. is broken. Uh, yeah, we got I, about a minute left. Any okay. thoughts about that? For, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, definitely the pension is, you know, for the people. Uh -huh. And so you want to keep PERS because you you have to follow the inflation, right? So okay. if we have cost of, you know, cost of living goes up, then you need social PERS. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, but it but it's it's financially unsound. So we it gotta is. do something. We yeah, I, you, you would work to so correct let's, that. Yeah, so the taxes that we want to cut, let's put let's use those monies for that. Okay, absolutely. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming in, Tiffany. Thank and, you. And good luck on thank your you. campaign. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. I enjoyed this. Thank you. We're coming right back in the Element Well Studio. Stay with us, folks.